Okay, let's do a classic proof for fun. This time we're going to prove that sine of 10 degrees is irrational. And first of all, you may be wondering that if we want to show a number is irrational, can we just let this equal to a over b, where a and b are integers, and b is not equal to 0, and from there, try to get a contradiction, right? However, I will leave that to you guys, because in this video, I will show you guys another approach to show a number that's irrational, okay? And now, here is what I notice. Sine of 10 degrees, which we don't know this too well, right? Hmm. Let's think about an easier sine value that we can work with. Sine of 0, yes, but that's just 0, so no. Well, how about sine of 30 degrees? Because that's a special angle, right? And let me just write this down right here. This is what we know, and of course, this is much easier to work with. Sine of 30 degrees. This right here we know is just 1 over 2. And now, can we build up any connection between the 10 degrees and also the 30 degrees? Sure, because this is just 3 times 10 degrees, right? And now, I mentioned 3 times. And you see, usually people talk about the double angle identity for sine and cosine. But have we ever thought about the triple angle identity for sine or cosine, right? So here's the deal. This is what we want. Because I see that there's a connection between 30 degrees and 10 degrees. Once again, it's just 3 times the 10 degrees, right? I want to have an expression for sine of 3 times an angle, so that I'll just put down 3 theta for this. So I really want to have an identity for that, and maybe I can work with that, okay? And now, this is how we can do it. The first way is, we can write sine of 3 theta as sine of 2 theta plus theta, and then we can use the angle sum formula for sine, right? And maybe we can also use the double angle formula for sine or cosine later on again. In fact, I did a video on this by that approach before, so you guys can check that out if you would like. Because I know you guys would like to see <laughs> something new in this video, so I'll demonstrate something new, something cool as well. Now, here is another way to look at this, okay? I will be using complex numbers, by the way. I will be using the Morius theorem for this. And I will just put down a general case, right? A special case in this case right here. Anyway, let me just write this down for you guys. By the Morius, we know that if we have cosine theta plus i sine theta, if we take this and then raise to a power, let's say n, we know we can get cosine of n times theta plus i times sine of n theta, okay? This is really, really cool, okay? And if you guys would like to read more about this, I will have the link to the Brilliant.org page for you guys. You guys can read more about it. And in fact, that's where I get the idea from to show you guys how to come with this identity by doing this approach, okay? Anyway, we are talking about 3 theta, so I want the n to be 3, isn't it? So now, let's go ahead and let n equal to 3. And I would like to plug in 3 into this n and that n, and let me put on left-hand side first. And now you know, on the left-hand side, this is the real part. This is the imaginary part. And on the right-hand side, as long as we can multiply everything out, and you know at the end, we will have a real part and also the imaginary part, right? Well, we can just set those things equal to each other, and then we can get a formula for this and for that. Yes, we can also get a triple angle identity for cosine as well. So this is really, really cool, okay? But anyway, we still have to do the work, though. So now, to multiply this out, we can just utilize the Pascal's triangle, right? And the numbers that we're looking at is 1, 3, 3, 1, namely the binomial coefficients when we have the third power, right? Okay, so right here, the first term is going to be cosine to a third power theta, and then the next term is going to be we add 3 cosine squared, okay, we take this square times that to the first power, and we'll just put this down as i sine theta here. And then the next term is going to be plus 3 again, and this time we we'll just have cosine to the first power, and then we will have to square this. So we will have i squared, and here we have the sine squared theta. And lastly, we have to take this raised to the third power. So we add i to the third power, sine to the third power theta, like this. And from here, let's pick up the real part and also the imaginary part, okay? So, as we know, this right here is just cosine to a third power theta, okay? 
And in fact, this right here is also going to give us real part because we know i squared is equal to negative 1. So let me write down these two things first. I will put down cosine third power theta, and then this is going to be minus, okay, because i squared is negative 1, so it will be minus 3. We have cosine theta sine squared theta, okay, so this is going to be the real part. And then for the imaginary part, let's just put on plus and let's factor the i already, okay? We know this right here has the i, but we'll put on the i right here already. So we'll just have this, this, that. So 3 cosine square theta sine theta, okay? And lastly, we have i to the third power. So i to the third power i squared is equal to negative 1. You multiply by i again, i to the third power is negative i, okay? And I factored the i already, so this is going to be a negative term again. So we have minus, and of course we have this term right here, minus sine to the third power theta, okay? Well, well, what do we want? We want to just have sine of 3 theta, and this is the imaginary part on the left-hand side. We must have this equal to this isn't it? So now, I will just conclude that sine of 3 theta, this is equal to this. And you see that if you have sine, this is sine, this is sine to right, a third power, ah, unfortunately, cosine squared is not really invited. But it's okay, we can get rid of the cosine squared theta because we can use the Pythagoras identity for that. So this is going to be 3 and for cosine squared theta, I'm just going to write it down as 1 minus sine squared theta. And then, of course, we have the rest. This is sine theta, and then minus sine to the third power theta, like this, okay? All right, let's just do a little bit more work. This is 3 sine theta. Let's just multiply in, okay, like this. So 3 times this is going to be 3 sine theta. And once again, multiply this and that in. So we'll have minus 3 sine to the third power, because this times that, theta, and then minus sine third power theta. In the end, this is minus 3 sine third power and then minus another one, so we will have 3 sine theta minus 4 sine third power theta. And now, we have this formula, and the good part is that sine of 3 theta is based on sine theta. Now, Let's come here and let's start with our proof. We are going to use 3 sine theta minus 4. And for the sine to a third power theta, let me write it down like this. Sine theta and then to the third power. And then this is equal to sine 3 theta, like this. So this is what we have thanks to the triple angle identity. And now I'm going to let theta to be 10 degrees, because this is what we want, right? And notice that we will just have sine of 10 degrees right here. And let me just write this down as sine of 10 degrees to be, let me just use another variable, let me just call this to be x, okay? So from here and this right here, I can write this down as a polynomial. 3, this is going to be my x now, and then minus, Four, this is going to be x to the third power now, and this is equal to what? Well, if you plug in 10 degrees right here, sine of 30 degrees is 1 half. So on the right-hand side, we just actually have 1 half. And now you see, we actually deduce this question to a cubic polynomial equation, right? And of course, let's just do the usual business because we don't like fractions. Let's multiply everything by 2, and let's rearrange the things. Let me have this term goes first, and then multiply by 2, you get negative 8x to the third power, and then this and that is going to be plus 6x, and then we will have a 1 on the right-hand side, but let's bring the 1 to the left-hand side, and it becomes minus 1, this is equal to 0 now. Okay, keep in mind, x, which is sine of 10 degrees, it's actually a solution to this polynomial equation, a cubic equation, right? Hmm. And don't forget our goal. Our goal is to try to show sine of 10 degrees is irrational. And remember, sine of 10 degrees is x. It's supposed to satisfy this polynomial equation, right? And you see? 
okay, I want to show something is irrational. And when we have a polynomial equation, and in fact, we also have what we call the rational zero theorem, okay? And this is actually one of the strategy to show a number is irrational or not. We can just come up with a polynomial and try to show if it doesn't have any rational zeros. If we can show that, then of course, this cannot be rational neither, okay? So that's the idea. Now let me just write this down for you guys. By the rational zero theorem, we know that the possible rational zeros are in the form of the following. And this is what we do. First of all, look at the constant term. In this case, we have one, right? So the factor for one is just one. And now look at the leading coefficient, which we have eight. Technically, this is negative eight, but just look at the eight. And we look for its factors, which is one, two, four, and eight. And we don't worry about the plus minus yet, okay? Anyway, based on this rational zero theorem, we know that the possible rational zeros are the following. This is how we construct it. We look at this one, and then divide it by this factor first, which is one over one, right? And then do the plus minus, okay? And then we have the next possibilities. We have to put on this one, and then over the second factor, which is two, and then here is the time to do the plus minus again. And then likewise for the next, one over four, and then put on the plus minus, and lastly, we have 1 over 8. And then we do the plus minus right here as well. So by this theorem, we know these are the only possibilities if you want to end up with a rational zero for this equation. However, though, let me just write this down for you guys. However, we'll just put on but. None of this work. And to check, well, of course, you can just go ahead and plug in these values into the polynomial, into the x, and then just work it out. You will see that you actually will not get 0 at the end, okay? And what's the connection? Well, we know x, which is sine of 10 degrees, which is supposed to satisfy this polynomial equation, right? Because we set that to be so, right? But the rational 0 theorem says any number that satisfies this polynomial equation cannot be rational because these are the only possible ones and however none of them work right so final conclusion is that sine of 10 degrees is irrational so let me just write this down for you guys thus sine of 10 degrees is irrational we are done and here is the box oh my god feels so good isn't it and before we go, of course, I want to tell you guys a few remarks. First of all, you see that we end up with a cubic equation, and sine of 10 degrees is going to satisfy this. And in fact, we also have what we call the cubic formula that will help us to solve this cubic equation. But I will do that in a future video for you guys. But anyway, I want to thank Brilliant.Work for sponsoring this video. And if you guys don't know about Brilliant.Work, I highly suggest you guys to check that out. And please use the link Brilliant.Work slash BlackPenRampant. And you see, this is one of the things that I picked up from their website, okay? You can just check that out. It has a lot of great lessons, and it has a lot of interesting topics as well. And if you guys would like to sign up for the annual premium subscriptions, be sure to use the link brilliant.work slash blackpenredpen. You guys can get 20% off if you're one of the 200 people to subscribe. And if you really like mathematics, you guys will really, really like brilliant.work because it's just so wonderful. I have been learning a lot from their website already. And in the future, I will do more videos for you guys, you know, based on their questions or based on their lessons. But anyway, hopefully you guys like this video. And yeah, as always, that's it. And if you're new, of course, please subscribe as well. Thank you. I feel so emotional after I finish this proof. Yeah.